today entitled Everyone His Day. Everyone His Day. So the question is, what pagan tra tradition do you ask people to blow their breath all over your food <laughs> and then you stand around waiting to eat a piece of it? <laughs> what tradition is that? You ask somebody to blow their breath all over your food, then you stand around waiting to get a piece of it. So I'm going to read this uh, handout that I have, and it's called Bacterial Transfer Associated with Blowing Out Candles on a Birthday Cake. It's by Paul Dawson, Inye Han, Danielle Lynn, Genevieve Lackey, Johnson Baker, and Rose Martinez Dawson. Now they did some research. The objective of the research was to evaluate the level of bacterial transfer transferred to the top of a cake when blowing out the candles on a birthday cake. Scientific data from our investigation may help raise awareness of possible health risks associated with birthday celebrations and encourage others to take steps toward preventing the spread of bacteria. This study examined the potential spread of bacteria when blowing out candles on a birthday cake. Wow. Preliminary tests of blowing on a nutrient agar indicated that bioaerosols in human breath expelled from the mouth may be a source of bacteria transferred to cake surfaces. Now, I know you never heard any of this. All you heard is about say happy birthday and celebrate my birthday, this, that, and the other. All right, but you're hearing it now. Praise Yahweh. After consuming pizza, test subjects were asked to extinguish the candles by blowing. Icing samples were sterilely recovered, then surface plated to determine the level of bacterial contamination. Blowing out the candles over the icing surface resulted in 1,400% more bacteria compared to icing not blown out. Due to the transfer of oral bacteria to icing by blowing out birthday candles, the transfer of bacteria and other microorganisms from the respiratory tract of a person blowing out candles to food consumed by others is likely. So if you had a piece of that birthday cake, which we all did before we knew y'all, yep, yep, yep. you got the bacteria from the person blowing out those candles, blowing their breath all over your food. You wouldn't allow them to blow their breath on any of your food. And some people like to smell food. If somebody, you see somebody smell food, you're not going to eat it. At least I wouldn't. You don't know somebody drop out of your nose, right? Then they go on with this study. They tell you something about the tradition of blowing out candles. All right? Blowing out birthday candles. The tradition of blowing out birthday candles had different theories as to its origin. Some theorize the practice began in ancient Greece, related to bringing cakes with lit candles to the temple of the goddess of the hunt, Artemis. Other ancient cultures believe the smoke from candles carried their wishes and prayers to the gods. A written account reported of birthday candles matching the age of Count Ludwin van Zinzendorf being presented at the Count's birthday celebration in Germany in 1700s. This tradition has become commonplace in many parts of the world. Yes, it has, right? Yeah, right. And you've never heard anything about bacteria being put on candles mm -hmm. and on the cake. Uh, all right, we're going to start out in Jeremiah, the Old Testament, the seventh chapter. Hallelujah. So today, all over the world and in Yahweh's yeah, temples, they hold birthday parties, <laughs> give gifts to the one being honored, and cry uh, happy birthday. Again, there are people in Yahweh's temples that are doing that oh, yeah. because they don't know. They, they don't understand. All right. So that's what we're here for, to help our people come all the way up out of Babylon uh, and understand when we're doing something that's not against Yahweh. Yes, it said, come up out of her. Said the World Book Childcraft International says regarding holidays and birthdays. For thousands of years, people all over the world have thought of a birthday as a very special day. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Long ago, people believed that on a birthday, 
A person could be helped by good spirits huh. or hurt by evil spirits. Mm -hmm. And again, this is the same thing that they're doing when they have these birthday parties, except they don't know it. Right, right, right. And God wants us to know it. Praise be to the mighty God. So when a person had a birthday, mm -hmm. friends and relatives gathered to protect him or her. Huh. That's why they had people come over their houses. They don't know they it. They don't know it. Oh, they don't know it. And that's how birthday parties began. The idea of putting candles on birthday parties goes back to Greece. The Greeks worshipped many gods and goddesses. Among them was one called Artemis. This is the same thing the scientific study just said, right? Mm -hmm. See, and some, some people be, will be looking at Shaloma and watching this TV show <laughs> like she's the Grinch. <laughs> they will. Oh, yeah. Right? Because it's like, you taking away my blood. You, uh, yeah. It's not me. Yahweh is the one. Just says Yahweh. But, but they will be looking at me like, you know, right, right, right. So Shaloma is a killjoy. No, I'm not. I'm a servant of Yahweh. That's right. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. so are you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, Artemis was the goddess of the moon. The Greeks celebrated her birthday once each year by bringing special cakes to her temple. Hmm. The cakes were round like a full moon, and because the moon glows with light, the cakes were decorated huh. with lighted candles. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And people talk about Yahweh blowing your mind. No, Yahweh brings your mind back together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, be careful to watch our words. Yahweh doesn't blow your mind. Yahweh puts your mind back That's together. That's right. Your mind was already blown before you knew Yahweh. Yeah. Talking about all of this yeah. heaviness and all this other stuff that was put in your mind. Right. Yahweh That's is putting true. you back together again. That's right. So more and more people the world over attach a certain magic to their actual date of birth. They may wear a ring with their birthstone in it for good luck. Huh. Yes, yes. And when they blow out the candles on their birthday cake, they keep what they wish for a secret. Mm. If they don't tell, if they do tell, their wish won't come true. <laughs> How many have heard that? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, we've been steep. Like, okay. We've been immersed, cover over our head in paganism. Yep. So why do people say happy birthday to each other? The good wishes of friends and relatives are supposed to protect from evil spirits. In many parts of the world, it's a tradition to pinch, smack, spank, thump, bump, or punch the birthday person. Even though it may hurt a little, they're said to be very lucky. Why? The reason for birthday spanks is to spank away any evil spirits and send them running into the far distance. Punches, thumps, and pinches, the harder they are, the better, and they're supposed to do the same thing. Then you have these party snappers, you got the horns, you have them popping the balloons, the firecrackers, and other noisemakers are another way of scaring off bad luck spirits that were thought to be hanging around. Again, when we were steeped in ignorance, right, right. we didn't know that. Right. Right. But Yahweh has come now and he's Hallelujah. pulling Thank back. You. Hallelujah. He's opening your eyes. Yes. And again, it may be very bright and you may have to squint, but as Rock said, just keep looking. You'll open your eyes right, to where right. you, can, you can look fully on and understand fully what he's telling you. All right, so we're in Jeremiah the seventh chapter. In the book Fossilized Customs, which if you don't have a copy, it would behoove you to get a copy of this. Fossilized Customs, the Pagan Sources of Popular Customs, written by Lou White, he states, the popular celebration of one's annual birthday is acknowledged to be by all authorities and ancient customs a pagan ritual from Babylon. There's no justification for it other than you just don't want to do what you always tell you. That's it. It's pagan. All right? The Babylonians serve the sun, moon, planets, and constellations. A Gentile practice condemned by Yahweh. Luke White goes on to say the ritual of the cake, candles, wish, and presents serve to give thanks to sky luminaries or sky gods for allowing the birthday celebrant to reach the annual cycle of their birth. The cake was baked for the queen of heaven. It was decorated and monogrammed with the celebrant's name, with the birthday person's name. 
We're in Jeremiah, or Jeremiah, the seventh chapter. And he gives us a scripture. Let's start out in verse uh, 17. Jeremiah oh, 7. <clears throat> because, you you know, you might say, well, Shalomah, with her old bridge self, she up here saying all this stuff. She hasn't went to the scriptures yet. <laughs> here, Yahweh is going to the scriptures Praise now. Praise now. All right, yeah. 7. Let's read verse 17, please. Seest thou not what they do in the seas of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? Verse 18. The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes. To, to the king from uh -huh. of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other mighty ones that they may provoke me to anger. All right, now he's talking about the queen of heaven. <coughs> he's talking about Israel was doing this stuff. Right, right, right. Israel is still doing this. Yep. Yes. Except they don't know they're making a the cake to the queen of heaven. They think they're celebrating their own birthday. Right, right. Mm -hmm. It says, Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of Jerusalem? Who is he talking about? Our forefathers. Hmm. How Ban gathered wood, and how Abba kindled the fire, and how Ishtar, the women, you got everybody involved. Okay. You got the father, you got the mother, you got the children. Uh -huh. to, they need their dough to make cakes to the queen of Shemaiah. There's no queen in Shemaiah. No. Who did they talking about this this pagan deity? Right. Artemis that we just talked about. And throughout the ages they've had different queens of Shemaiah. You got some to say Miriam or Mary is the queen of Shemaiah. I don't have to name the de denomination. You know what I'm talking about. It says that they make, make cakes to the queen of Shemaiah to pour drink offerings unto other ells that uh -huh. they may provoke me. This is Yahweh saying provoke me to anger. All right, let's go to Jeremiah, the 44th chapter. So now, another queen of heaven was the goddess Asherah. It says, from fossilized customs, going to Jeremiah 44, attention was drawn to the heathen goddess Asherah. Assyrian cult practices invaded Yahweh's temples and by Jeremiah's time became a flood. Even within the temple area, the worship of the sun, moon, planets, and constellations had been established. Ishtar, the planet Venus, appeared as the queen of heaven. Now here's another queen of heaven, Ishtar, who as morning star was goddess of war, and as evening star was goddess of love and harlotry. How deeply rooted this system of false worship was, can be gathered from what the exiled Hebrews in Egypt said to the prophet. And we're going to read that in just a minute. This queen was worshipped on the housetops of the city, with a whole family in the household employed in the ritual of her worship. Uh -huh. And again, in Yahweh's temples, you might see the mother, you might see the father. <clears throat> there are some temples that we've been to where the children actually came without the mother and the father. But to see the whole family in Yahweh's temple, you're looking at something exceptional. But doing this pagan birthday thing, or these other pagan days that are coming up, you're going to see the mother, father, and the children, and the grandchildren, and the cousins, and the uncles and the aunts. So be upset with the enemy, Hasatan. Okay. Don't be upset with people. Right, right. Come against him. That's like right. You never come against him before. By revealing truth. All right. It says the children would gather fuel, the fathers would kindle the fires, and the women would knead the dough and make cakes to her honor. The cakes to the Queen of Heaven were decorated and monogrammed with the celebrant's name, with the one. That right, was right. having a birthday party. Right, right. They call it okay. It's going to the Queen of Heaven, but it was really for them. Jeremiah 44, we want to start at verse 15. Jeremiah 44, and let's read verse 15, please. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burnt incense unto other mighty ones, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt doped in the land of Egypt, in Paris answered Jeremiah, saying, 16. As for the word 
that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of Yahweh, we will not huh. hear you huh. unto thee. Now, you see what these rebellious people? I know, right? They're so busy doing their thing. <laughs> and that's what different people have told us when we let them know about birthdays. And we started out in our first temple celebrating birthdays. We didn't know. Right, right. But as Yahweh transitions us and yes. progressed us, we stopped doing it. But we know some people that started out in the first temple with us, they're still doing it. Right, right, right. Yeah. This is like 30 years later, people. Okay. <laughs> So when, oh when, are we going to let go of stuff because Yahweh says to do it? Okay. Said, then all her Adam, which Yada, that their Isha had burned incense on the other elves. Mm -hmm. That's a red flag right there. That's a, that's a under no circumstances should happen right there. Right, right. Thus says Yahweh. And I'm not knocking men. I'm knocking women, men, whoever won't stand up and do what Yahweh said. Because right. Yahweh said to come against that. That's what we're here for. We're not here to pacify you. Or we're not, not we're here to, to nourish you and to strengthen you. And we can only we will only remain weak, separated, and ineffective when we continue to, to be mixed and dibbled and dabbled. Right, right. Yahweh said, if you can't make up your mind huh. from straddling the fence, let me help you out. I'm gonna spit you that out. That right, that right. I'm gonna cut you off. You won't be a part of me. Okay. Again, this is the soldier talking, and I'm talking to soldiers. It says, the men knew that their wives had burned incense on the other elves, and all high Isha that stood by a great multitude, not a few, uh -huh. a great. You see these commercials coming on TV? With the Christmas tree and with the different yeah. things. Mm -hmm. And then the Hallmark Channel, they got this special where they're only showing, okay, these people, they fall in love around December 25th. Huh. <laughs> it's part of the deception. That's a, de a deception for grown-ups. With the children, they just, children are just um, very innocent and naive, and they don't they think that people would lie to them or tell them right, anything right. that's not true. So they just get cut off with all the toys and, okay, it's a pretty tree and this and this and this. Well, the children are innocent until they're 20 years old. Right, right. They're up under us. Right, right. So it's on us to let them know. It says, a great multitude, even all high am that dwelt in the land of Mizraim and Pathros, Amar, Yermiah Amar, talking to the man of Yahweh who's okay. telling what Yahweh said. Uh-huh. What did they say? <coughs> As for Hadabar, that you have a power huh. unto us in Hashem of Yahweh. Right, right. You say he's talking for Yahweh, but look here. We will not. Huh. <coughs> you rebellious somebody here. Mm -hmm. Again, in ignorance now, we did this. Yeah, right. But Yahweh said, I don't want my people to be ignorant. Yep. Amen. He says that. We will not shamar or listen unto you. <coughs> Furthermore, not only are we not going to listen to you, uh -huh. but see, Yahweh said, I'm going to send you to the people. They're not going to want to hear you. But he said, tell them anyway. That's right. That's our duty. Why? Because he, he's a fair and he's an honest judge. And nobody will be able to stand before him and say, well, I didn't know. Nobody right, ever right. told me. Right. No. Yahweh forbid we ever stand before that judgment seat. And Yahweh has not cleared us before then. Mm. So we become righteous. We won't be able to say, <clears throat> I didn't know or I didn't understand. He's being good to us by telling us this. Yes, he is. He's not being bad. He's not wanting you to go be a nun somewhere like this other organization has made. And you can't marry and you can't do this and you can't do that. All right, that's man-made stuff. All right. He's wanting to get the best for us. Yes, he does. All right, uh, verse 17. But we will certainly do whatever, whatsoever thing brought forth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her as we have done. We and our fathers, our kings, and our princes in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of visuals, and we 
and were well and saw no evil. Huh. So you see how to see these people were? I, know, I did right? talk to the man of Yahweh. The man of Yahweh standing up and telling them what Yahweh said. They said, we will certainly, no doubt now. Okay. All right, you, you, you told us you represent Yahweh, but we will no doubt continue to do what we're doing. It said, we're going to do what sort of thing going forth out of our own mouth. So you have some people want to tell you, even after they come to Yahweh, I'm grown, I can do this, okay. I can do that. After you come to Yahweh, you're supposed to be his perpetual children. All right. His perpetual people. You're never the adult in this never. relationship. You don't, you, don't, you don't ever tell Yahweh what to do. I know, right. But if you do, you're one of the biggest fools that ever lived. Well, no, Hasatan is the biggest fool. Okay. You get second place. He <laughs> said, but we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth out of our own mouth to burn incense unto the queen of Shemayim, to pour drink offerings unto her, as we have done. Now, to see how widespread this, is, this thing is. We, huh. our fathers, our kings, our princes, in the cities of Yehuda and in the streets of Yerushalayim, says, then they deceived themselves, for then everything was beautiful. Right, for right. then we were prosperous. Then everything was working out. Said then we had plenty of victuals of food and were well and we saw no rob. Huh. You didn't see it because you were deceived. You were right, right up in the in the valley of evil. Right. Amen. That's right. And didn't know it. Just like today. But deceive themselves and then we can do that. Deceive ourselves and think all this wickedness that we're doing, the things are going well for us. Uh -huh. And people do deceive yep. themselves. Yep, yep. From the deceptive. But again. He's just setting you up so he can cut your head off. That's it. He's just setting you up so That's he can it. make sure you go to the lake of fire. That's what he's about. Mm. All right? He always Praise about love and he's about yeah, right, restoring right. you and he's about letting you know, hey, this is not going to get you like it is, into bro. my kingdom. Well, this is not going to, to get you into good standing with me. Not with right? yeah. And not like you can work for your salvation. Nope. But you can work and do some stuff and lose it. You can. Once you repent and get baptized, you're not a guarantee to go into kingdom. It depends uh -huh. on what gotta, you do. Got to keep on right. keeping on. Yes. Yahweh has no rebellious children. No. None. He's never gonna have any. You'll have, you'll hear a lot of people standing up and saying that they're Yahweh's children. <laughs> okay. But if they're in rebellion, doing anything Yahweh said, they're deceiving themselves. All right. Yahweh is not deceived. Or he's not. All right, verse 18. But since we left off to burn incense to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. Now they're talking about it was worse for us <laughs> to try to serve Yahweh. <laughs> See how that don't let anybody tell you that. I know, right? When you come to Yahweh, everything gets worse. You're you're, you're lying demon. You That's get right. out of my face. Matter of fact, you hanging around me and you, so you can get the fallout of our blessings. Okay. Get out of here. We we once were deceived, but no more. Hallelujah. We know we're abundantly supplied. That's right. Praise the Lord. We have so much that we're giving to people, and we're you know uh, bringing things to Yahweh in Yah's temple and Yahshua's temple, and just. All temples throughout the world because we have so much in our own house. Hallelujah. Yeah, we said that you wouldn't be able to contain it all. That right. We're not going to be a hoarder and just keep all that stuff <laughs> right. packed up in our house. You're yeah, always going to tell us, look, this person can use that. This right, person right. can use that. Hallelujah. So get away from that lying demon talking about when you come to Yahweh, things are worse. Sure. It gets better and better. Nothing but a lie. Mm. They're saying, but since we left off, but see, that's their heritage. That's our people's heritage. They've been deceived. Some of them like to be deceived. Uh huh. Right? It is written. They, they like to just doze off and be in, the, in this, uh, what is it, fugue state. Uh -huh. This blue funk state. Mm -hmm. You don't really like those three monkeys. See no evil here. <laughs> 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 there are people that like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just like being a, a big dummy. That was my, my Bishop's favorite word. <laughs> and he used it on some, some brothers. He never yeah. called a sister that. But he would tell them once they got to a certain point, look, you big dummy, you. Yeah. <laughs> would you stop? He's trying to, like, wake them up. All right. Praise the mighty God. Since Yahweh we Yahweh left off the burning incense to the queen of Shemayim and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things. Don't tell me that my father 
doesn't supply everything. You a liar, your feet stink, and the truth is not in <laughs> That's what we used to say. And that been consumed by the sword and by famine. Huh. Yahweh is our protector. Yes, she is. I know you're a liar. You're a big liar. And, and, and only diplomacy and the love of Yahweh would permit me from just telling you to your face, like Yeshua told me. Right, you. right, right. Get away from me, Hasatan. Verse 19. And when we burnt incense to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her? and pour out drink offerings unto her without our men. Huh. So the women tried to carry this thing on. I know, right? The men, you know, they heard Yahweh and they, all right, they, they stopped. But then here the women just going to try to, like, carry it on. Right, right. And then I love my sisters, but there's some sisters that think that they can uh, nibble on the man with their mouth <laughs> yeah. to beat him down until he's just going to do something. <laughs> no, no, no. A real man is not like that. Uh -huh. no. And when we burn incense, they talking about how everything just turned badly. When, we, when they stopped burning incense to the Queen of Shemayim, when they stopped pouring out drink offerings under her, when they stopped making cakes to shaka her, that Hebrew word shaka is worship, serve, bow down. Right, right. Mm. The only person you worship, serve, and bow down to is yeah. Yahweh. Yeah. And pour out drink offerings under her without our Adam. They said, hey, we I tried know, to right? do this without our men. Huh. Yeah, yeah. So again now, Yahweh has a certain order. And whoever you are, man or woman, when you start going off, don't just follow the other one that's off. Okay. How can you get back on track if both of y'all is out there doing right, right. That's following the right. something that's not of Yahweh? Right. One of right. somebody has to stand yeah. up, and and, yes. and yes. I, that's why yes. I, I yes. admire yes. my husband and all men of Yahweh. Yes. Me and him would always tell each other, "Hey, we love each other, but the only reason we're together is because Yahweh is first. Hallelujah. If you go and follow yes. something that's right. not Yahweh." I'm not going with you. We tell each other that to our face. Why? Because we're servants of Yahweh. And we understood whoever's first. It's not That's like right. I'm so in love with you. And, and we were in love with each other. Right, right. Not like that I'm just so, you know, and vice versa. Man or woman, you can't be so in love with somebody <laughs> when they go to tell you something and yeah, you know it's not it's Yahweh. Right, right, right. 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 So, so, so a good right, marriage, right, right. you let each is. other know, hey, I love you, but now if you I go to step right. another way, then Shalom and I go on your own. Kaya would tell me, if you, if you go step another way, he would tell me first. And then I would let him know. And that's the only reason we were together. Hallelujah. He said he was looking for somebody that had Yahweh first. Praise to like my he God. did. That's it. And it was always that way. That's it. And, and that's that women, is. that's security. Yeah. Women, that's, that's, that's what you want in a man. And brothers, vice versa. All right. And don't be trying to go get somebody from the Sunday church and all that stuff and, and <laughs> rebuild to work. them like no, you made a bionic one or something. <laughs> that don't work. There's no. plenty of women in the temple. All right. All right. Going back to fossilized customs. And we're, let's go to uh, Isaiah, the Old Testament, 47. And then I'm going to read this from uh, fossilized customs. Isaiah 47, chapter. Hallelujah. So fossilized customs says the, the candles symbolized the sacred fire and they were numbered to each annual cycle completed. Yeah, yeah. The prayer chant and all the ritual procedures are carefully preserved and it is a religious occasion. Okay. Unlike we were deceived into thinking, oh, this is just something fun. This uh -huh, is just uh -huh. No, it's a religious occasion. That's right. That's right. It says, witches regard the day of one's birth the most significant event in a person's life. And again, there are people in the world and in Yahweh's temple that regard the day of their birth. Oh, yeah. As the most significant event. Oh, yeah. Well, newsflash, the most significant event is when Yahweh called us and we responded. And Hallelujah. We Hallelujah. Yes. That's right. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. It says, astrologers base everything on birth. If the celebrant can blow out all the candles, then a secret wish made to a genie <laughs> or Juno, if the person is a female, will be granted. The birthday itself was a time of great superstition 
to a pagan. So they were surrounded by their friends and relatives for protection. Okay. Astrology is an ancient Babylonian process of worship. It was used to determine the quote unquote sign under which a person was born. Uh huh. Now you may not even be in my generation, but you understand what's your sign. I know, mean, right? Yeah. <laughs> And we thought that was cool. We thought I know, that, right. that was it. And that was like your introductory line. Right? Oh, yeah. Again. <laughs> we were blind, deaf, and dumb. Praise <laughs> Yahweh. No more. Nobody no more. Yeah. What's your Hallelujah. sign? <laughs> All right. So everything that happened to a person was determined by the stars. The position of the sun, moon, planets, and stars at the time of one's birth produced a personal horrible scope. Actually, it's a horror scope. Yeah, yeah. Horror scope <laughs> used since ancient times by witches, palmistry experts, fortune tellers, diviners, sorceresses, tarot card readers, magicians, soothsayers, and others who dabble in the occult. And how many of us went to the newspaper All right. to All right. read what your horrible scope was yeah. for the day? Uh -huh. You couldn't go out of the house without reading that horrible scope again. This horror, this this should be um, something to celebrate. Yeah. You, you realize how far y'all have brought you from. Yeah. And if you like haven't stopped it yet, you'll look back a year or yeah. two from now right, and right. thank Yahweh for bringing you know, right. out of that. Yeah. Praise yeah. Joe. Yeah. All right, and then you have to go get your birthstone in different colors. I think they said mine's supposed to be green, summer, or the emerald, or whatever. But the bottom line is nothing. It's just a stone. That right. The word occult means hidden. And this is also divination, and that divination is idolatry. All right, right. we're in Isaiah, the 47th chapter. Mm -hmm. So horoscopes are also called birth charts. Uh -huh. These are made to help you supposedly understand the significance of your birth. Mm -hmm. Again, newsflash, the significance of your birth is you were born to serve Yahweh. God did. Yes, you were born to come to Yahweh and do what Yahweh did. That's every do. turn the dust says Yahweh. That's why you're here. Thank you for that. And whatever side benefits, if you get to go, you know, over to uh land of Mizraim, see the pyramids, or uh -huh. if you get to go to Ethiopia or wherever you get to go, you want to go to, to London. Okay. That's just a side benefit. Okay. But the reason you're here is to serve Yahweh. That's to it. Stand up and say to Yahweh's people into the world when From Yahweh God says to Yahweh. All right, so you don't need your birth chart done. <laughs> Yahweh already, you, you're reading your birth chart right here. Uh -huh. Isaiah 47, let's start at verse 13, please. Hallelujah. Thou art weird in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologies, the stargazers, the monthly pro. Those Gnosticators stand up and say thee these things that shall come huh. upon thee. Yeah, yeah, we're huh. saying, okay, you out there with them, know, right? under the curses, the curses are going to come up on you. Uh -huh. He said, you're weird in the multitude of your counsels. Okay. You're taking all these opinion polls, calling the psychic hotline, yeah. thinking they can tell right. you something. Right, right. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators stand up and save you from this thing that shall come upon you. Okay. Because I said, if you get out from under my umbrella of protection, uh -huh. if you get out from under doing what I say, if you get into disobedience, the curse is around That's there. That's right. Y'all are. Right, Y'all right, said right. the curse causeless, causeless does not come. Okay. In other words, that curse has a tail to it. Mm -hmm. You get into disobedience and it comes on you like boom, just like yep, yep, your yep. just boom. All it's coming right sudden. on you. Yahweh's not sending it. It's just out there. Right. When you get out there, it's, it's a consequence. You can't avoid the curse when you're in disobedience. All right? He said, but let these other things that you think is not me. Huh. If you want to have your birthday party and all that, then when stuff starts happening to you, then you go and consult your own mind. Right, right. Because you decided, hey, I'm worth this. I know, I've right? I know some people that, and in Yahweh's temple, tell me what they're going to do to their children if they don't give them something on the birthday. Okay, day. yeah, mm -hmm. a gift. I mean, and if they don't acknowledge them, that this is just right. like 
they did it was was that unpardonable uh hot dog unpardonable yeah. sin all right verse 14 behold they shall be as through the fire shall burn when they shall not deliver themselves from the power of the frame thing there shall not be a coal to warm as the fire to sit he said behold they shall be a stubble the fire, some of the people in disobedience, shall burn them. They shall not deliver themselves from my shell of the flame. Uh -huh. There shall not be a cold to warm it, nor a fire to sit before it. Let's go to Leviticus in the Old Testament, the 19th chapter. He said they had it for the lake. Yeah. Leviticus 19. And again, we have a choice. Yes, we do. We can do what we want to do. But uh, as the old saying goes, if you Big and bad enough to stand up and do it, and you you're gonna have to be big and bad enough to stand up and take the punishment. Uh -huh. Yahweh has punishments too great behind disobeying him. That's why he dictated all these books to us. And again, he did it out of love. That's right. He's not trying to take anything no, away from trying us. Trying to give it to you. He's trying to get something to us. All right, Leviticus 19. Uh, let's read verse 31, please. Leviticus 19. Praise the mighty God. Yeah. Verse 31. Hallelujah. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. The title of this yes. lesson is Everyone His Day. So there are people that are so wrapped up in themselves, they made themselves their own idol. That right. That's what these birthday celebrations are about. Uh -huh. their own worshiping themselves, really. And they're deceived, thinking that they're not worshiping themselves. Just like this person talking about what they're going to do to their children. Because uh, the, they're divorced. And what they're going to do to their children if they don't give them a better present on Mother's uh, Day. Since it comes before Father's right, Day. Right. Than they do to their father on Father's right. Day. This is people in the temple. Okay. Y'all right, right. And as we were like discussing, these are prototypes. Don't get stuck on individual people. Yahweh gives you prototypes of people. Yeah. So we can help these people yeah, yeah. and get them up out of that. Yeah. There's no way in the world that somebody should be have studied this Bible and talking about that stuff. Uh -huh. And make sure they get a bigger present than somebody else. Right. Or a pagan holiday. Alright, he said, regard not them that have familiar ruachs. Don't seek after wizards to be defiled by them. Why? Because I am Yahweh your Elohim. Okay, come to me. I tell you what come to do. Come to me. Go to uh, Old Testament, Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. Praise the and mighty God. And how many times does he have to say it and uh, how many ways? I know, right? Yeah, some people, you read a scripture, oh, I read that before. Well, evidently, you didn't get it because <laughs> Yahweh, Yahweh sits you right there up under it. Yeah. And you can read something a thousand times. Right, right. And don't get it. That's how Yahweh's word is. Yep. And that's why he says, this is how you come to know him, by hearing and hearing yeah, and right. hearing and hearing. Tenuous. Not only at the temple, but you're supposed to be telling this stuff to yourself. That's right. The main one you're supposed to be hearing and hearing it from is you. That's right. Minister you're not supposed yourself. to go out that door and then be telling yourself something different. Hey, again, you can do what you want to do. Right. That's right. But we all have to learn how to control our flesh. Right. That's right. it. Because the flesh will take you to the lake of fire. That's it. Like that that's that's what I'm gonna do. But things can be so good to your flesh that you can OD. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 18. Let's read verse 14, please. Hallelujah. For these nations which thou shalt possess hearken unto observers of time and unto diviners but as for thee Yahweh thy Elohim hath not suffered thee so to do now he's talking about the children of Israel they were going to go and conquer, conquer the promised land the land of Canaan all right he said these go we which you shall possess they Shema, they listened, they paid attention to, they followed observers of times. Okay. And unto diviners. He's talking about these pagan things. Yeah, yeah. But as for you, it says Yahweh your Elohim has not allowed you to do so. 
He's not commanded you to do that. Okay. How many know that Yahweh is the boss? <laughs> and there are some things he does not allow us to do. All right. And if we're smart, <laughs> we'll listen. Okay. And not do it. Now again, if we're a big dummy, as my husband would say, then we'll go ahead and think, oh, oh we'll just say, well, you know, that's just some long jump moment talking. That's just <laughs> this and this and this. And then that, that'll be the devil telling you, yeah. see, I don't really have to do that. I don't have to. Right. All right, let's go in the Old Testament to Exodus 27, chapter 22. Exodus 22. Uh, yes, you do have to. Yes, you do. <laughs> Whatever right. Yahweh says Everything you have to do, says. yes, you do have to do it. Yep, yep. And that's why he doesn't tell us everything at once. <laughs> that's right. And it's not your doing it or not doing it that's important. It's your wanting to be right. Okay. Yes. With Yahweh. That's it. Not right in your own mind. There's this uh, um, Shemite guy, and his last name is Legend. I don't know if that's his real uh, name or not. But we can be a legend in our own mind. Yeah. yeah. But guess what? That's fantasy. Okay. Yahweh deals with reality. All right, Exodus 22, let's read one verse. Verse 18, please. Hallelujah. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. He commands you, don't let a witch kaya or live. So fossilized custom says these practices from Babylon are tightly woven into our cultural yeah, tapestry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The severe punishment for idolatry documented in the Tanakh are to serve as examples for us. Yep, yep. In other words, we can't do the same thing these people did and not get punished. Right. right. Let's go to the New Testament, 1 Corinthians. So these practices were tightly woven. And we saw that wasn't Gentiles that was baking cakes to the Queen of Heaven. <laughs> That's not Gentiles and Israel. Or was it the temptations and made silent night sound so beautiful? <laughs> yeah, it sound beautiful. Yes, it does. But what is it attached to? Right, right. Paganism. They're even singing scriptures. <laughs> yeah. But when is it brought out? And what is it attached to? Right, right. It's attached to this December 25th. Lie that Yeshua was born on December 25th. Uh -huh. So no matter how beautiful it sounds, we shouldn't have that silent night up in our house, even right. if it's in, the, in August, right. July or August. Right. 1 Corinthians 10. We can't appreciate Nat King Cole singing about chestnuts roasting. <laughs> but what's, what's it hooked up with? Right, right. Paganism. All right, 1 Corinthians 10. We're going to start at verse 5, please. Hallelujah. But with many of them, Yahweh was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Are you talking about ancient Israel that yeah, didn't yeah, make yeah. it to the promised land? Why? Because they said that Yahweh said to this, as for like the, the Israel in Yermiah, as for what the man of Yahweh is telling us to do, look, we going to do whatever right, comes right. out of our own mouth, and people... They won't say it with their mouth, but by their actions. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What is that? Belief, behavior. I can tell you anything with my mouth, but right, you, right. you need to look and see what I'm doing and what everybody else is doing. Hallelujah. I'm not going to be convinced by what's coming out of your mouth because <laughs> Yahweh already told me that he already opened my spiritual eyes and yours too. Right, right, right. And yeah. we, we want to be genuine. We want to be open and honest because we're dealing with Yahweh. That's it. We're not trying to impress you. Uh uh. Now, if you get impressed, which you will, by men and women of Yahweh. Yeah, yeah. Because you love Yahweh. Said, but with many of them, Elohim was not well pleased. And what happened? They were overthrown in the wilderness. Is that right. They walked around there for 40 years till every one of them died out. Uh huh. Right? All right, verse 6. Now, these things were our example. To the intent we we should not lust after evil things as they also okay. lust. Now an example is something that somebody tells you and then you say, Oh, okay, I'm not gonna do that. Right, right. I ain't oh, okay. here. If it's good, oh I, I will do that. Right, right. <clears throat> an example is not something where somebody tells you, 
and they let you know uh, it turned out bad for that person. Okay. Then you run your foolish self, <laughs> and you go do the same thing. Like, what, they say. what is wrong with your head? You uh -huh. need to come and let Yahweh take your head off, pop it off, and screw it back on again so it can get back right. Yeah, yeah. Again, that's all of our fleshly naked nature. That's how we are. Yeah. That's how we are wired naturally. Not right. But Yahweh is rewiring yes, us he naturally. Yes, he Hallelujah. So we can overcome that flesh, yes. what that flesh wants yes. to do. Yes. Like beat it down. When somebody says no, and it's good for us, the flesh rises up and just boom, <laughs> just like a bullseye. Hallelujah. Like somebody shot us out of a cannon and want to go do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And again, for our own good, Yahweh says, now these things were our examples yeah, yeah. to the intent or the reason that we should not lust after raw things. Right. Lust to just, okay, I was planning a big birthday party and I'm going to get these decorations and I'm going to get presents and this, that's lusting after evil things. We're not even supposed to lust after food. Right, right. That's right. If something just gets so wonderful to you, like this <laughs> minister said, he was working a summer job and he, he was stopped by the drugstore and he started having a Coke every day on his way home. And then he said after a couple of weeks, it got to be his flesh. We're talking about, okay, yeah, let's stop and get a Coke. <laughs> And then he realized it. I ain't getting no coke. Get out of here. Uh -huh. So he quit it just because his flesh was telling me, yeah, I got to have yeah. this other sister. Yeah, you know, and I got to have my ice cream every day. Every day I got to have my ice cream. So before she went to bed, she would have a bowl of ice cream. Huh. That's what she died from. Mm, that's great. Diabetes. Mm. Again, we got to control that. Yeah. Don't mean you can't have ice cream. Don't mean you can't have a, a uh, coat. I wouldn't because it's, you know, battery. Yeah. But still, that, that's you. But just don't let you just have to have it right, every day. Right, if your flesh is running you and you can get some good practice by saying, no, I don't have to have that. Right, right. No, I'm not going to do that. Right, right. All right. Uh, verse 7. Neither be ye idolatrous as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Huh. All right, said, so don't be idolaters as were some of them. Yeah, it's right. They were their own idol. Again, when you celebrate birthday, you're, you're your own idol. It's all, all about right. you, your ego, yep. attention to you. Mm -hmm. I remember this birthday party at my first temple that we went to. And this sister... I guess she was just lonely, but anyway, um, she was liking uh, my ish, and I didn't realize he was liking me, but she had arranged for these three brothers to come and get on their knee before her and sing the Shy Light song. <laughs> what is it? Honey, you call my ish. And I, and I just looked like, I don't believe this lady. She had it all arranged, and they actually kneeled before her, and she put the record on, Again, we do, and I'm not knocking her. I love right, sister. Right, right. She came up out of that, and bless her heart, she's gone. Yeah. She's waiting on the resurrection. But this is the type of stuff we do to glorify yep, yep. ourselves. Yep, yep. To be our idol at the birthday party. It said, as it is written, I am sat down to eat and drink, and then they rose up to play. Right, right. Not rose up. You can just sit down, eat, and drink, but rise up to serve Yahweh. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't mean you can't play. But what were they playing at? They were playing at something that Yahweh said, don't. Okay. All right. All right. So we have some legal play activity. Yes, we do. And then there's some illegal play That's activity. That's right. Y'all right, right Rob. Y'all like it Let's is. Let's go to our Revelation, the 18th chapter. Mm -hmm. So the hams can know. So fossilized custom says the sovereign commands us from the skies to come out of Babylon. Okay. Revelation 18. And the sovereign, he's talking about Yahweh. Yeah, yeah. Yeshua commands the same thing. All right. Revelation 18, start at verse 4, please. Hallelujah. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not all her plagues. Verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and Elohim have remembered her 
equities. All right, so the people that's doing these paganisms, they're on Yahweh's black group. They're on Yahweh's list. Said, I Shemar, another voice from Shemaiah Mamar, come out of her, my am, talking to you and me, that you be not partakers of her hata'a, because, said, there's some plagues yeah, attached yeah, to that, yeah, yeah. that you receive not of her plagues. That's the only way we escape that. I stopped having birthday parties after I found out about them. That's because I, I saw this. It's like, that's the only way I can not receive the punishment. <laughs> right, right. It says, for her heart to high, have reached unto Shemaiah. Uh -huh. Well, we know what happened uh, with Sodom and Gomorrah. Right, right. When Yeshua came down with the Malachim, and the statement was made, hey, their sins have reached unto Shemaiah. You're in trouble now when what right, you right. do reaches unto Shemaiah. Why? Because Yahweh's going to address it personally. Yep. Yeshua came down personally. He sent the Malachim on, but their sins reached unto Shemaiah. And again, there was a big black hole right there, like a meteor had hit it. Her hot dive reached unto Shemaiah, and Elohim have remembered her iniquity. So again, it's just a matter of time yep. before the punishment comes. We're going to want, want to go to the Old Testament in Genesis. So this is uh, fossilized customs again, Genesis 40. The great dragnet is the calendar we use based on the solstices. Witches have used it since Babylon. Huh. Shatan by stealth has this planet worshiping him by diversion. All right. Everything is designed, although in the background, according to the plans of Shatan. He is behind the sun worship customs. Shatan will be exposed as a source of the sun. Now we're going to give an updated lesson on why we do not watch the sun to decide whether a day has ended or began. We started that out in our first class, and we did it again in our second class. But Yahweh gave us revelation knowledge. Praise the mighty God. That we're not sun worshipers. All right. right. Yes. And so there was a little misconception, but we will do an updated lesson on that. Because you notice when somebody says something about um, something and they said something about how we went from seven o'clock to six o'clock now and so if you haven't gone to the web and seen our video called garden of eden time then we're going to do the updated version but all you have to do is just go look to garden of eden time praise to mighty yah and then you'll understand why we don't say sundown to sundown anymore hallelujah all right because yahweh showed us hey Shatan is the, the source of sun worship. All right? We're in Genesis 40. Let me just read this from this other lady that wrote a book on birthdays. Linda Reynolds Lewis writes in her book on birthdays. Birthdays has been celebrated for thousands of years in early civilizations where the development of a calendar made an organized reckoning of birthdays possible. The horoscopes of ruling monarchs their successors and rivals had to be cast with care and birthday omens meticulously examined for the prospects of the mighty would affect the prospects of the entire society. By the time of Ptolemy the fifth, this is an Egyptian pharaoh, this practice was well established. She quotes, Ptolemy, the ever-living, the beloved Ptah, the son of the two brother gods was born on the fifth day of the month Dios, and this day was, in consequence, the beginning of great prosperity and happiness of all living men and women. Uh -huh. So now they're saying this man, well, you know the pharaohs thought they were gods. Oh, the Caesars yeah. thought they were gods. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, some kings and queens now think they're gods. All right, Genesis, the 40th chapter. And we want to start at verse 18. Oh, this is yeah. 40. And verse 18. And let's read it, please. And Joseph answered and said, This is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three days. 19. Yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head for from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree, and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. Verse 20. 
And it came to pass the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto all his servants. And he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants. All right. Uh -huh. So lifting up the head means he cut it off. Right. It says, and Yasub answered, and Amar. This is the interpretation thereof. The three baskets are three yam. Mm -hmm. Security. And <clears throat> yet within three yam shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee, and shall hang thee on a tree, and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee. And it came to pass the third yam, which was Pharaoh's birthday, that he made a feast unto his ebbet, and he lifted up the head of the chief brother. He killed somebody at his birthday party. And the chief baker among his evident or servants. Verse 21. And he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again, and he gave the cup unto Pharaoh. And Verse 22. But he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted. All right, so he killed this man at his birthday party. Let's go Old Testament to Leviticus, the 18th chapter. Leviticus, the 18th chapter. So this was an Egyptian Pharaoh. We want to read one verse. Verse 3, Leviticus 18. And verse 3, please. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein ye dealt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do, neither shall ye walk in their adornments. All right, he says, after the doings of the land of Mizraim, we just read where Pharaoh was celebrating his birthday. It says, wherein ye dwelt, shall you not do. So there were some things when our forefather was in captivity mm -hmm. in Mizraim, for almost for 430 years, that's what Yahweh said, that they learned.